So welcome to the Church of Jesus Christ. Directly, welcome to the Tuesday Nighters. And then thirdly, welcome to our weekly book club. Uh, this is our 36th week. Brother Dwayne and I were working on our YouTube page pre-meeting tonight. We, we got together early and um, we were working on the YouTube page. And he said, how long have we been doing this? About three, four months? I said, we've been doing this 36 weeks. That sounds a whole lot like eight to nine months. And I was as surprised as he was. So welcome to the 36th week of book club. Um, I've entitled the two chapters that we read, uh, This Land is Your Land, This Land is God's Land. I also tried to simplify this page to bring it a little more current, so you have the first 30 weeks on top. Again, if you want to screenshot this or, or capture it, feel free to. And then I brought, especially our most recent theme, which has been um, the Sermon on the Mount and the follow-up to the Sermon on the Mount, especially here in the Americas. That's what we've been reading. So, so far for the these first 35 weeks, we've done 212 chapters, 5,200 plus verses, 141,000 plus words, 62 hours of discussion. All right, let's jump into this. Um, I put the subtitle on each page. There are two Jerusalems. One is old, one is new. If you read your assignment tonight, or these two chapters, you might understand that reference. Even if you didn't, you might understand that reference. Even if you did, you might not understand my ridiculous reference. So we'll see. Our journey through the Americas, uh, I, I wanted to capture where we've been before where we're going. So we know this. Jesus was crucified in Jerusalem. Uh, God showed his displeasure with mankind, shaking the earth in the old country to the point that it destroyed the temple. I know I, I say this probably too often for those who do Tuesdays and Sundays, but what the word of God says is it tore or rent is the phrase it uses in the scripture. It rent the temple in twain or it tore the temple in half into two sections. What used to be the, the veil between the where the where everyone was able to go in the temple and where the Holy of Holies was, where only the ministry went, the veil was ripped in half and very, very symbolically. And so all of a sudden, because of this act of the crucifixion, the resurrection, the fact that Jesus Christ ripped through the, the veil that separated the commoner here on earth from the Holy of Holies in the heavens, the temple did what Jesus Christ did in, in taking that veil down. Just a beautiful symbolism. The earth was shaking in the old country. So it was that the earth was shaking probably all over this earth, all over the world. Um, so in the Americas, they had earthquakes as well, but much, much more. There was more destruction than just that. Uh, and, the, and we read about cities and, and floods and fires. Um, great destruction and the survivors who who made it through this covered in darkness probably covered in fear covered in questions um soon the mist started to to lift from them and they soon found that they were being visited from above jesus descended from and ascended to the heavens just as he had done in jerusalem we read in Acts, the first chapter, the third verse, that he had done this for 40 days. So it was here in the Americas. We don't have a capture with how many days. We don't have a capture with any verse that says how long that was happening. But it seemed he was here uh, probably taking care of a lot more business than he had to take care of in Jerusalem because he had to establish a lot here in the Americas. So we began our walk in the Americas in, our, in this reading, um, comparing the Sermon on the Mount in both lands, both Matthew and 3rd Nephi. Then we found that 3rd that, that Nephi was capturing Jesus addressing a small, a small snapshot, if you will, small portion of Israel. We've even got a verse in, in one of the chapters, 15 through 17, that identified that there were some 2,500 men, women, and children that he was addressing, all from the house of Joseph, 
one twelfth, or at least, excuse me, representing one twelfth of Israel. Those who had fled from Israel came to, uh, or, or left Israel, I shouldn't say fled, left Israel and came to the Americas were, were of the house of Joseph. So those, those people who had survived, we know, were, were, came from the bloodline of Joseph. The next two chapters we read were 18 and 19. That was last week. That was a study on Jesus establishing and then reinforcing what I said was his gospel. The gospel that it can be defined as his message. The gospel that can be defined as his church. Both. So he was establishing and reinforcing his gospel with the people of the, the house of Joseph. Tonight we're going to go to 20 and 21. And I think what the focus on, on our reading this week was, was the land of America and how it will host something spectacular. And he identified it, he being Jesus Christ, identified it as the new Jerusalem. So we have to always remember so that we can keep everything in context and we can kind of stay upright, um, kind of intellectually and spiritually through this, this process. So we have to always remember who's on this land. Joseph. Okay, we may call them Lamanites, we may call them Nephites. It's Joseph. We want to remember it's the house of Joseph, the tribe of Joseph, the the more importantly, the favored son of Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel. So the, the head of the house is Israel. I always say there's 12 rooms in this house of Israel, and each of those rooms have a name of a son. One twelfth, one of those rooms was Joseph. He was the favored son, coat of many colors, if, if you need that reference. So that Joseph sent his family over here to represent this small facet of the entire house of Joseph. That's who we're talking about. But we find that this small group from Joseph will become extremely significant in the future, has a role that is extremely significant. And if you think of how downtrodden and disrespected they are today, it's it's magnificent to even think that, that that kind of turnaround can happen. And it will. And it can. So Israel's favorite son is now here in the Americas. Remember that he rose up out of Israel in a land foreign, Egypt, and became a powerful man there. Then he used that power to draw his family into a feast. We believe, and Jesus Christ speaks of it in these two chapters, that that will happen again. Joseph from Israel will find himself in a foreign land, no longer Egypt, but now the Americas, and draw his family together for a great feast in the New Jerusalem. So why is the church, and we hear it almost every month, uh, and certainly at every conference, why is the church so stirred and excited about the work among the natives in the Americas? And the Americas, I use that phrase so that we don't think just United States of, but instead North America, Central America, South America. Why is the church so excited about the Americas right now? It's not necessarily about our own roles. It's about the roles that Joseph will will take on and so with that's what we read in these two chapters over and over and over again uh, much of the specific if you will excitement from these two chapters is captured in a couple verses so i didn't want to do a lot of verses but i did want to highlight those verses that i hope stir your spirit up about this as well so here's what jesus told told the people this people will i establish in this land I want to say that again. He says to those who are listening, this people, speaking of them, themselves, will I establish in this land unto the fulfilling of the covenant which I made with your father Jacob. Again, he's reinforcing who they are. With your father Jacob. And it shall be a new Jerusalem. And the powers of God shall be in the midst of this people. Even I will be in the midst of you. So he's making a promise. My father's power will be among you, and I will come back and be among you in that time period. He's coming back. Jesus identifies himself as the prophet that all the prophets spoke of. He said, I am that prophet. 
I am that one who has a voice. I am that one who has a voice that all must listen to or they'll be cut off. I think is exactly how he says that in one of the verses. I wanted you to hear that he identified them and re-identified, iterated and reiterated who they were. You are the house. He says ye, I'm going to say you. You are the house of Israel. You are the covenant which the father made. In your seed, in thy seed, in your seed shall all kindreds of the earth be blessed. He goes on to say they'll be blessed through him, through what he did. They'll be all of the all of the of the the inhabitants of this earth will be blessed by Israel. And I will remember my covenant, he said. That's what his father had told him. I will remember my covenant. That's in 3rd Nephi, multiple verses. It's it's a 20th chapter, 25 through 29. Then in, in the 31st verse, he says this. They shall, be, and he's speaking to the, the same people he's talking to. He's talking about their future sons and, and daughters. Maybe a year from then, maybe a hundred years, maybe hundreds of years. We now know it's hundreds of years, thousands of years, actually. They shall believe in me that I am Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Our journey through the Americas, um, oh, excuse me. <clears throat> Our journey through the Americas is captured in, in these verses that I want you to, to hear. Again, only as highlights kind of up at this level, and then we can dig in lower when we start talking. He tells of the, how the time will be marked. Listen to this. We get a little bit of insight to what we should be waiting for. I give unto you a sign that you might know the time when these things shall be about to take place. I shall gather in from their long dispersion my people, O house of Israel. Picture the climate today. What he's saying is we're going to bring in all these people who represent Israel from all over the world. Think about this country especially and how really the, the um, flavor of, of receiving new people into our country, especially new people who don't look like all the people. These are Middle Easterners. These are Islanders. Who knows? Who knows who all these people are that he's speaking to? But think of the climate we're in with, with immigration and some of the things. He says, here's the sign that you will see, that you might know when the time or the time when these things shall be about to take place. I shall gather in from their long dispersion, my people, O house of Israel. Jesus teaches the Josephites that the Gentiles, us, us. And more specifically, those who have the understanding, the church, have the understanding of who they are because of this wonderful record of Joseph that we have our hands on. We'll introduce all of this to their people through the power of God, through his power. He addresses a time period. Has it begun? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe we're on the cusp of that. I don't know. I don't see this first sign clear enough, but I do see that they, they need to get here in order to gather. He addresses it this way. There will be a great and marvelous work. He also tells of a man who will be marred and be healed, and I will heal him, he says in that ninth verse in the 21st chapter. All of this we can talk about if anyone wants to dig in. The sign, all of the things I'm, I'm highlighting for you, or other verses, whatever you want to talk about. He speaks of a destruction among the Gentiles. Their chariots will be our, I shouldn't say their, our chariots will be destroyed. Our cities will be destroyed. Our strongholds will be destroyed. He goes even down to the level of our groves. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's much more. I just highlighted those four words that he said will we'll fall under this destruction. Again, those are the 14th through 18th verses. And then he provides their true purpose. This is the true purpose in this land of America, wherever it might be. They may build a city which shall be called the New Jerusalem. Going on, he says this, then shall the work begin, commence, with the Father among all nations in preparing the way whereby his people 
may be gathered. Listen to what he calls the Americas. May be gathered home to the land of their inheritance. Over and over, he calls this land the land of their inheritance. This is the new Jerusalem. That's why 20 and 21 are so exciting. So let's talk Jesus, Joseph, and Jerusalem. 